Okay. Um, So what I want to do is I want to re I want to review from last week. Um, now remember last week I talked about uh, how how something dissolves, uh, and then the quantitative aspect is um, looking at uh, how we measure concentration of a solution, which is moles per liter. Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple of these problems again just to refresh you. Then we're gonna get into um, taking a concentrated liquid and diluting it, like the pesticide program, the thing I was telling you about, where I almost killed myself. Um, okay, so, so there's two ways to make a solution, dry, starting with dry ingredients or starting with a concentrated solution and then diluting it. Okay, and, this, and the calculations are, are different, so. All right, so you have to recognize, first of all, which one is it, okay? In this particular problem here, I mentioned dry. Um, but if, if, if they're talking about how to make up solutions and they don't mention a starting solution, assume it's dry, okay? All right. So, um, make up directions for the following solution using dry solute, sodium chloride, and I want 2.1 liters. And the concentration is 5.0 molar. Okay. So whenever you start with dry, you've got to, it's a two-step problem. First of all, calculate how many grams you would need. Okay, so how many moles are we gonna have in this solution of 2.1 liters? Remember the definition, what is the definition of molarity? Moles per liter. Let's do this slightly different. Okay, the definition of five molar is five moles per one liter of solution. And the solution includes a solvent plus the solute. Okay. <clears throat> So how many moles are we gonna have in 2.1 liters? Five and one, what about 2.1? Yes, and multiply 2.1 times five. So that's going to be Okay. Now, when I go to the store, can I buy moles of sodium chloride? What do I buy instead? 
grams, exactly. So we need to convert the moles to grams. And I think I already did that up here. Yeah, 58. And that should be 614, let's see if it is. Yeah, 614. Okay, now I said I needed directions how to make it up. Now remember, whenever we make up solutions using dry ingredients, you have to dissolve the dry stuff first in something less than the final volume. So our final volume is 2.1 liter. So I need to mix up the 614 grams of sodium chloride in something less than 2.1 liters. It really doesn't, really doesn't matter, it could be one liter, 1.5 liters, as long as it's below the 2.1. So I just put on here, add 614 grams of sodium chloride to 1.9 liters of water and mix, then bring the total volume up to 2.1. Okay. So your final volume is you adjust it at the very end. You don't put your total amount in at first. And this counts for both dry and wet mixing problems. Okay, so does this make sense? Two-step problem. Okay, so let's do... Okay. How would you make up 7.18 liter solution of sodium chloride to concentration 2.34 molar? Okay, so again, how many moles are we talking about here of sodium chloride? How will we do that? Well, Leaders cancel gives us moles. So that's going to be what did you get? Yeah, okay. Then we need to take that sixteen point eight moles. and convert it to grams. So how would I make up this solution? What would the directions be? Correct. I, I would a reasonable number wouldn't be seven point one. <laughs> I mean something like six or five or something like that. And then another thing, good thing to add in that is to totally just in the directions, totally dissolve. So you wanted to have no solid left because otherwise you'd be in a super saturated solution, which is these calculations don't work for that. Only if the solute totally dissolves. Okay. So, all right. Uh, okay, so that's some examples on dry. Um, another example would be, um,
Well, there's just different ways of saying this. Okay, so that's examples of starting from a dry material. Make your final solution. Okay, so let's look at what difference it makes if we start from a concentrated solution. Now, usually things are, when you buy it at the store, are concentrated. Um, fertilizer, um, pesticides, um, lots and lots of stuff. Uh, when you buy acids for your pool, for example, usually it comes in concentrated. Hydrochloric acid is the typical acid you put in a pool, but it's concentrated. It's 12 molar moles per liter. So it's strong stuff. In fact, when you open the cap, you'll, you'll see some um, hydro, hydrogen chloride is a gas. And then you dissolve it in water to get hydrochloric acid. So normally when you buy this concentrated acid and you take the cup off, fumes are coming out of hydrogen chloride. And when it hits the moisture in the air, it forms something that looks like smoke. It's not smoke, but it looks like smoke. So when you take it off, then you see the stuff and you go, whoa, it's really concentrated. In fact, if it doesn't do that, you know it's not concentrated and it's old. <coughs> but normally you buy acids very concentrated and dilute them. Nitric acid is usually around 18 molar. Uh, uh, sulfuric acid is usually around 17 molar. So it's, it's really bad, bad stuff um, in terms of um, from a safety perspective. Okay, so let's jump over to starting with wet ingredients. Now, before I jump in there, I want to I want to um, describe a concept for you. If I have a beaker of water and I have in fact, let's um, do this a little differently here. Um, Okay, so I have five particles of something dissolved in one liter of water. Okay. And then I dump in I dump in four liters of water. So we have a new beaker now. How many particles of solute are in the new? Beaker. Five. Because we just we haven't touched the solute. The solute is still five particles. It's just in more water. We have five liters now. If I have five moles. of particles, and this could be salt, it could be uh, hydrochloric acid, just five particles or molecules or something. Um, you know, only in this case, I have five moles of particles. After I've thrown four liters of water, how many moles of particles do I have now? Now, we already said that if you start with five particles, when we dump in water, you still have five particles. You don't have more particles, right? And remember, moles is like dozen. Like we have five dozen particles. We dump in four liters of water. You still have five dozen particles. There's no more or more or less, right? Okay, so if we have five moles of particles, we're going to have five moles of particles after we dilute it. Does that make sense? five moles of particles. What's the difference between the concentrated one and the dilute one? 
It's only one thing that's different. Volume of solvent, yeah. The number of moles of the solute is the same. So we have five moles of particle dilute. Oops, excuse me, concentrated. Five moles dilute. Now, if you remember this from last week, remember if we multiply if we multiply moles per liter concentration times liters, we end up with moles, right? Because moles per liter is that times liter, you end up with moles. So I can now substitute ml instead of moles. So that means we're gonna have five moles. Let's see. Right? So that's going to be equal to five moles. And then here we have Okay. So basically we have, because we can substitute moles per liter times liters for moles, we have a new equation. So we're going to have moles and those are going to be equal now. So this is a new equation now. Sometimes you'll see it as um, MC, MV. I like to use the actual units we're working with. Okay, so that's the equation. How many variables are in this equation? Think about this as M, M. So this would be M dilute, M C. L dilute, L C. Yeah. Four unknowns. This we know, this we know, because you know what your starting concentration is going to be. Going to be the concentrated one. Your ending concentration is going to be the dilute one. So you know those, and you know your ending volume, which you want to end up with. What you don't know is how much of the concentrate to use. That's the trick in the, the wet preparation. Okay, so let's look at a problem now. Okay, how would you make 7.12 liters solution of 5.23 molar? This is gonna be sodium chloride. 20, from a 24 molar concentrate. Okay, remember you have four variables. You have MC, M dilute, liter concentrated, liter dilute, right? Okay. So we have three of those, we can solve for the other one, okay? So remember, so we have the concentration of 
of the concentrate times the liters of the concentrate, that's equal to the dilute final concentration times the final volume. Okay, so what is the final volume? How many liters do we wanna make? 712, right. And what's the concentration of the final diluted product? 523 moles per liter. Remember, moles and moles per liter aren't the same thing. Okay. And what is our starting concentration of the concentrate? 20, yeah, 24. And we don't know how much of that little concentrate we need to add to our 712 liters. So now we solve, solve for L sub C, okay? So are you guys comfortable with the variables now? We, with wedding rooms, you always have four. Normally, <clears throat> normally we know the final volume, the final concentration. We know the concentrated concentration. We, we don't know the volume of that. Yeah. So would it be just like we multiply those two numbers on the right side together and then divide them over to the left side? Oh, you just isolate L, L sub C. Okay. Just divide both sides by 24, right? Which is kind of what you said. <laughs> I just had it in the opposite order. All right. And this is what you did in lab last Thursday. When you started, with, remember, with a six molar, then you took some out, and, and then you put it in and uh, increased the volume. That's what you did Thursday. Okay, so Okay, so we need 1.6 liters of the concentrate. Okay, so what are the directions to mix this up then? Tell me how to mix it up. Think about how you did it with the dry stuff. We want to end up at 512 liters of the dilute stuff, right? Yeah. So we're going to take 1.6 liters of concentrate, and it's already dissolved. We don't have to worry about dissolving it because it's already dissolved. And then we're going to bring the 1.6 up to 712. So we divide or subtract it? Add. Well, subtract, so we can figure out how much to add. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to take 1.6 liters Going to take the 1.6 liters concentrated sodium hydroxide. Let's say that again. What is it? Five point.
Is it five? Yeah. Okay. That's the answer I'm looking for. But you got to do the calculations to get the parts. Okay, and everyone follow that. I'm not saying you should do this from scratch yourself just yet. So let's do another problem. Are there any questions about this setup? Get the roar from the audience here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, here's another problem. Why don't you guys try working it on your own and then we'll work it as a class. And I noted what you wanna end up with dilution wise and what you're starting with concentration wise. Now it's real important you understand this because our next problem is going to be we're going to dump two solutions together and find out what the final concentration is going to be. <laughs> Okay, do we need more time? Okay. Final answer, we need to explain this though, yes. This is how many liters of concentrate. That's why I put LC, yeah. LC, and then I... And then, then you need to add in this much to get to 23.5. Yep. Okay, but I need to... Yeah, a square around it, something that's just say what it is, right? Yeah, a little paragraph, yeah. Oh, paragraph. <laughs> yeah, add. <laughs> 5.24 liters of the concentrated. <laughs> okay. So we've got a 
So we have a concentrated solution times the volume equals the dilute concentration times the volume. Okay. The concentrated um, solution is LC is question mark. Our final is going to be. So we're going to need 5.26 liters of the concentrate. Now you could do this a couple of different ways. You could subtract 5.26 from 23.5, or you could just have that as part of your narrative here. So we're saying add. You could say it like that, or you could actually do the subtraction. DJ, what did you get? Yeah, um, Either direction would be fine. Now, guaranteed on test five, you're going to have some of these problems. Also, I want you to have a, a, a problem. I'm going to say describe how a crystal of salt dissolves in water. Remember with the, the little uh, polar water pulling them out, and we had the the solvating force and the crystallitis force coming into play and all that junk. You need to have all that down. Okay, now, is everyone okay with this starting from a concentrate? Do you guys want me to do another problem or you want to go to the next? <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next kind of problem. The next kind of problem is a mixed problem. Okay, so we have two solutions of different concentrations of salt and water. And we dump them together. What's our final concentration of salt? Okay, so let's look at a graphic of this thing first. Okay, so we have two solutions, right? Huh? Two solutions, yes. Okay, then we dump them together. I want to know the final concentration. So let's look at this thing. Um, if we have five particles here, three particles. Okay, so what is our total number of particles when we dump them together? Eight. Okay. So to do a co uh, concentration, you need moles and you need volume. What's our final volume? Hmm? 
One's five, one's three. We dump them together. What's our final volume? Eight. Okay. So now we have what we need to find the concentration. So we have number of moles or number of particles. So this is going to be five moles. If like our other. So we have moles and eight liters. Okay, all right, so let's go to now. We, if we say we call this solution A, B, C. So we need to figure out in solution A, how many moles of sodium chloride we have. And we do that by going volume times concentration again, gives us moles. Volume times concentration for solution B, it gives us moles. And then our total volume is going to be 3.45 plus 456 added together. It's our final volume. And our final concentration of moles is going to be the moles of A plus moles of B. Okay, so let's do that puppy now. You got to add two parts. You got to add the moles together, add the volumes together. And then do the same thing that you did with the other volumes. Well, this problem just I just want to know what the final concentration is. So then you then you divide by to get per one mole. All right, so first thing is, moles of A is gonna be 123 moles times 345 liters. Oops, let's do it in the same order here. All right, add those together. And that's gonna be moles of C. We're in okay right now. This is, so that's the total moles when we dump in solution A to solution B. Solution A's got so many moles, solution B's got so many moles, dump them together. We have to have the sum of those two moles. Okay, that's gonna be 14.9 moles. Okay, but concentration is in two parts. It's moles per volume. What's our final volume? That's going to be the 345 plus the 456. Eight oh one, right. So what is it moles per liter? How do we get that? So we're going to divide. 14.9 by eight. Or moles per liter. Okay. So we need to find the total moles, total volume. And if we want to find out 
how many moles per one liter, we divide that by the, by the volume. That'll give us per one liter. Now this is a common problem when we have acids and bases, because acids will neutralize a base like we did in lab last Thursday. So one mole of acid neutralizes one mole of base. So you know the concentration and volume of one and the concentration and volume of the other, we have a ML equals ML problem. And that's what the titration is based on. Okay, so does this problem make sense? I try to try to do this in really simple steps. Okay, so are there any questions about this? I'm going to do another one. Okay, now this is exactly the same problem. Different numbers, same problem though. But there's an interesting skew to this problem. And I'm starting with extremely strong acid, adding it, excuse me, extremely strong sodium chloride, and I'm adding it to extremely dilute sodium chloride. So just by looking at this without doing anything else, what do you think our answer should be around? So when you have to do your calculations, you know your ballpark. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what do you think our answer should be around? Barely mean the final concentration? Yeah. No. So what do you think? Before you do, don't do any calculations, just I want you to look at this now. You have something super, super concentrated and we add something super, super delete to it. What do you think is gonna happen? Middle amount, or maybe which would be probably favored, the super concentrated or the super dilute? Super concentrated. Super concentrated. So we're going to be closer to 12 than we are to this guy. So our answer should be like maybe 11.9, 11.8. Because this is, we're hardly adding any moles of sodium chloride to this here. We're getting, almost doubling the volume now. So, so doubling the volume does what to concentration? It cuts it, it almost cuts it in half. Yeah. So if this was, if the volume didn't change, we, we were looking for like 11, 8, 11, 9, but because we have to have it, because we have all this water. So now we're looking at something around half of 11.8, you know, 5, 5, 5, 6, something like that. Okay, so let's see what our numbers are. <laughs> okay, so first I'm gonna do is calculate mole, moles of, um, this will be our A, this will be our B. 
or A is going to be So ballpark is around where we were thinking it might be. It was kind of surprising that um, moles. I'm sorry, what? It was kind of surprising that from the moles that it equaled out um, what a like a's moles. Yeah, because this doesn't contribute much because it's so dilute. Yeah. What it contributes is all this volume. It's almost like just adding plain water. So I want you to be able to look at these and say, is my answer reasonable? Because again, I'm going to, when I grade this, I'm going to look at your setup. Remember, 90% of the points come from your setup. Um, OK. <clears throat> Did everyone end up at 675? Cool. Okay, now I'm gonna have one last problem today and it's gonna to be a doozy. Okay, how many grams of sodium atoms are in combined solutions of 1.23 liters of 2.34 molar sodium chloride plus 3.45 liters of 1.23 molar sodium bromide? Okay, so let's break this down. Okay, 
let's call this A and this one B. Oh, we're looking at how many grams of sodium atoms we have. Just oh, it's just sodium bromide. Just find out the periodic table. Instead of chloride, it's Br. That's all. But it's a solution, though. So that means solutions of sodium chloride are sodium atoms and chlor chloride atoms, and they're both ions. Sodium bromide is going to be sodium and bromide ions. So when we dump these together, we're going to have three atoms in there, three ions in that new solution. Okay, so we have sodium ions from solution A plus sodium ions from solution B, <coughs> right? Plus chloride ions from A, bromide ions from B. So how are we gonna work this? How can we get moles of sodium? from sodium chloride. So if I have one if I have one mole of this, how many moles of sodium do I have? One. How many chloride? One. So if I know the moles of this, I know automatically the moles of sodium because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Analogously, Same with the bromide. It's a one to one ratio. So when we dissolve sodium chloride in water, we're getting two moles of particles out of one mole of sodium chloride. Getting a mole of sodium, a mole of chloride. Mole of sodium bromide gives us a mole of sodium plus a mole of bromide. So we dump all these together. The ratio of two to one, that's right, two to one. So if we know the moles of each one of those, no, we add them together. Because if this is 1.11, 1.11, how many is this gonna be? 1.11, this is 2.3. Yeah, so you gotta add them. If you multiply by two, it will be right. So we add them together. We have 1.1 plus 2.3. You get what, 3.4, whatever. Okay. All right, so our task then is to figure out first moles of sodium chloride.
which is going to equal moles of sodium. It's one to one. The moles of sodium chloride is um, 123. Okay. So we have 2.88 moles of sodium from the sodium chloride. Now we need to find out how many moles of sodium comes from the sodium bromide. Same calculation, just need to know the numbers here. So 345, So again, by calculating the moles of sodium bromide, we know the moles of sodium because it's one to one. Moles of sodium chloride, we know the moles of sodium because it's one to one. Now we add those two together. That'll give us a total moles of sodium. And then sodium is So if we're just looking at sodium, we have 164 grams of that stuff. Now this is as complicated as it's gonna get. So if you're able to follow that, you can check. All we've done is we've put a little, little bit problems all together. So make sure, and I, I'm gonna uh, post lots of worksheets on this stuff I haven't done yet. I've got a note to myself tonight. <laughs> practice tests <coughs> and worksheets on the sky. Also some um, problems in um, your uh, textbook. Okay, are there any questions about this guy? Thursday. So Tuesday, I'm gonna lecture on acids and bases. More like how the, how the lab is going. Are we doing titrations? What is an acid? What is a base? That kind of stuff. I was gonna do that tonight, um, but then we have a whole lecture day Tuesday with kind of nothing to do. So I just split today up. Yeah. The final is chemo, right? What? Is it is the final chemo or 
Okay, we're going to have two tests in one on next Thursday. So, yeah, so you have a unit five test and you have a unit one through four test. How much is that going to be? Found? Well, the, um, it'll be chunky, but um, the good news is, is I'm going to take questions from your old tests. So I'm going to publish all the old tests. So you'll get an idea. Just make sure you can work all the problems in the old test. I'll send you the numbers are going to be Numbers will be different. <laughs> If you know the if you know the questions well enough, it should be. Yeah, and remember setup ninety percent though. <laughs> and then um, um, you can have a note card per test, so you can have you can have two note cards basically, both sides, three by five. <laughs> Let me stop the recording.